Okay, we're on. So I'm going to turn the, uh, let's see if we get a little bit better sound. Okay, so we're going to do a transformation. F of x is equal to negative 3 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 3. What is the parent function? Square root of x. Square root of x. So let's start with that. Start with the parent. Always start with the parent. I want to graph the square root of x. I know you've all studied the library of functions, so you know exactly what that looks like. But we can give ourselves a couple of points. We know it's going to start here at 0, 0. We know that the square root of 1 is 1. We know that if our x is 4, our y is going to be equal to 2. We know that if our x is 9, our y is going to be equal to 3. So this is the graph of our square root function, and that's where we're going to start. Okay. All right. Good. I'll be okay with that. Okay. So the next thing that I like to do, I'm going to go from left to right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, look, there's a negative sign right here. And a negative sign that is outside of the function. The negative sign isn't inside the square root symbol. It's outside the function. It means I have to flip it over the x-axis. Okay. I have to flip it over the x-axis. So, so, so I'm going to go negative square root of x. So of course, it, at the origin, there's nothing to flip over the x-axis. It means that my point here at 1, 1 is going to become 1, negative 1. My point here at 4, 2 is going to become 4, negative 2. And my point here at 3, I'm sorry, 9, 3 is going to become 9, negative 3. So I've accomplished my first transformation by flipping it over the axis. That's my negative sign. That's all I've done is my negative sign. Going from left to right, let's turn to blue. Okay. So how about negative 3 times the square root of x? Okay. So that means every single point that I've just graphed on my first transformation, I have to multiply it by 3. It's outside of the, of the uh, function. So I have to multiply it by 3. Well, if I multiply 0 by 3, it's still going to be 0, so that point is still going to stay there. If I multiply negative 1 by 3, I get negative 3. If I multiply negative 2 by 3, I get negative 6. No, nope, you're right. Bad. Eh. No good. Okay. I have negative 2. No, negative 2 by 3. I do. I get negative 6. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, it's 4 is my x value, but my y value is negative 2, and I'm multiplying my y value by negative 3. Right? After I'm multiplying my y value by 3, I've already accomplished the negative. Are you okay, McLean? Make sure? Okay. And now I have at 9, I have negative 3. I multiply that by 2, by 3, that's going to give me negative 9. So now, my next transformation is beginning to look like this. And I might even label some of these points. I know that's 0, 0. I know this is 1, negative 3. I know that this is 4, comma, negative 6. And I know that this is 9, uh, comma, negative 9. I like to label those points after I do the multiplication because my next one is going to be my horizontal and vertical, and I like to combine those. So if I'm going to do horizontal and vertical, let's do that green. I'm going to go to the right, 2, and up, 3. Are we okay with that? Because it, it's, it's um, y equals a times x minus h plus k. So I'm going to go to the right 2 and up 3, every single point. So I have 0, 0. Let's go to the right 2 and up 3. There's a point. And that point is going to be um, 2 comma 3. And I have 1 negative 3. Let's go to the right 2 and up 3. I have a point here at, I'm sorry, 0, 3. I had a point here at 4, negative 6. I go to the right 2, 
I go up three. That's going to give me a point at six, uh, comma negative three. Yes, I do something wrong. Yes, it is three zero, not zero three. Thank you. Thank you. Good catch. And then I go my nine. I go to the right two, and up three. That's going to be at what? Um, here it's going to be at a, a, a eleven negative six comma negative six. And my graph, my final graph looks like this. You guys were were, were outstanding doing this the other day together. Yes, Alexis. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, wait. You know, wait. Why is it? Why is it multiplied by? Um, oh, never mind. Never mind. Huh? Okay, see it. Yeah. All right. So. Um, if you want to bring colored pencils, that's fine. If you don't, have I taught you the technical way of identifying this? Okay, the technical way of identifying your final one is you go this one and you draw an arrow. Oh, but it's not the right one. You draw it to the one that is, that is actually it and you make sure that you've labeled a couple of points. And that's a perfectly legitimate way of identifying it. Um, Helen. Um, Wait, so we want, okay, so the blue one is the negative three is where, like, yes. But then, like, we move it to the right two and up three. Yes. And that point is all the way up there. Okay, now uh, which point? This point right here? Yeah. Okay, so my first point on the blue one was zero, zero, right? Oh. Okay. I moved to the right two and up three. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes, particularly with the square root type of a function, because you forget. People like to start it at zero, zero. But we're transforming every single point on the graph, including the initial point. It's kind of like the vertex, but the function doesn't have a vertex. 